last last segment here for i would like to get your input about ukraine and the reason why because at the time of this conversation larry the secretary of defense lloyd austin is in kiev <laughs> right now and i've even find out that soon the cia director uh, william burns will be going to kiev in the next few days usually as the one who was inside washington i understood that when you have uh, this kind of trips like this, given the situation in Ukraine, that's basically spells the trouble for Zelensky. That's the end is here. Yeah, yeah. So my first question, Larry, first of all, do you think Ukraine is a failed state? Oh, yes, no doubt. This is what's taking place. I call it a, a hospice visit. Mm. You know what hospice is mm, yeah. when you've got a. Uh, uh, a family, friend, loved one who's ready to die, and uh, you put them into hospice where they get palliative care so that they can die peacefully. And that's where people come by to visit, say goodbye, say farewell, before they pass on. That's what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> Zelensky's a dead man walking. The Ukraine has no viable military or political road forward. And people need to get that into their heads. There's no magic weapon that the United States can provide. Um, if F-16s show up, they're going to get shot down by Russia, just like the Su-27 and other jets that uh, have been flown. Uh, if they send more tanks, they're going to get blown up and destroyed, just like the you know the Challengers and the Leopards mm -hmm. and uh, now the Abrams, because. Ukraine does not have the manpower, and that means trained manpower, to operate these West weapon systems and to operate them effectively. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, Ukraine's population has been cut almost 50% from what it was at the start of this war, uh, as the Russians call it, the special military operation. And uh, casualty-wise, kill, killed in action and wounded in action, I think, surpasses a million more than a million have been killed or wounded which are just horrific numbers for a conflict that's barely 21 months old old yeah yeah i was i was surprised to even think that uh, ukrainians would have have learned something from history and my reference is to georgia i'm sure you remember what happened with georgia at the time when uh, mikhail shakashvili who was by the way educated here in the us we the one who put him there anyway and when we told him yeah just go ahead and fight the russians we will support you and when the first shot was fired and we told him what are you crazy us fighting the nuclear russians you got to be out of your mind and the russians walked in within three i think three or four days uh and and this is the same scenario that i'm noticing differently here that Zelensky would have have thought about that history in georgia yeah well there there is a western hatred of russia that i really don't understand yeah uh it's not it uh, just it's irrational um there's one thing to be opposed to the soviet union international common turn international communism bolshevism mm -hmm. now that was a movement and that was uh, seen as a potential threat uh to the western capitalist systems but uh they're gone and in their place, you now have a nationalist Russia, which is uh, one of the most Christian nations, mm -hmm. Christian in terms of uh, practicing uh, faithful that show up at the, at the churches Church. and mm -hmm. cathedrals. And yet the United States is just virulently opposed to Putin must go. He's a dictator. When, you know, Putin... Putin hasn't locked up as many people as uh, Joe Biden's Department of Justice has with respect to like January 6th, as an example. Um, the crackdown on social media, the abuse of government power by the FBI and Department of Justice against people like Donald Trump and yeah. uh, other political opponents, just the politicization that's taken place, it's reminiscent of what the KGB used to be like. Yeah. And so where the United States used to be able to draw a pretty clear line of demarcation between 
we're a democracy that believes in liberty, freedom, and uh, the Soviets are uh, tyrants, autocrats who don't believe in freedom and don't believe uh, that you have any rights. Well, we're now seeing a complete role reversal. Reverse. Russia, Russia is becoming what we once were, and we are becoming what the Soviet Union once was. And th that's not a good look. No. Yeah, if you, if you all have asked me, Larry, if you all have asked me 15 years ago, will I ever witness censorship <laughs> and this uh, right. in, here in America? Yeah. I tell you, you must be out of your mind. You know, right. but here it is the yeah. reality of it now. Now, if you speak the truth, you are the enemy or they shut you down completely, which unheard of. And her of yeah. if we are to call for this, you know, freedom of speech per se, and and shame on the government for even uh, considering this reason. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Any final word, Larry, about where do you see the global geopolitical landscape headed towards? I mean, I know we are entering into multipolar system. Gone the era where the Earth used to be the the sole property of a sole superpower. That era is gone. Those in Washington yeah. who do not want to admit it must be living in a, a parallel universe. Uh, where do you see things moving forward? And I give you the last put word. On, put on your seatbelt. You know, if you're going, if you're going to be in a car crash, usually you don't have time to put your seatbelt on before the car crashes. Mm -hmm. The car crash is coming. It just remains to be seen whether we're going to wind up with a global war or a regional war. But we're going to have. There will be a. There will be war. There will be economic disruption of, on a significant scale. And so it's better just sort of buckle in, strap in right now so that when the car collides, you're not thrown from it, that you have some sort of plan for survival. Because uh, we, we, as you correctly noted early on, yeah. we don't have any men and women of stature <clears throat> and vision that are able to sort of try to calm things and say let's uh, let's step back and approach this in a more rational manner we don't have any george kennans today uh we don't have any marshals um so george c marshall um uh, hmm. we have um uh, we have a veritable clown show we have nikki haley's uh. um so hmm. it's just it's it's dangerous we, with the haley's and the pompeo's uh, and the Chris Christie's, uh, yeah, you know, it, it it's just it's bad news. So I wish I had a more hopeful message to give, but uh, I do not. Well, I appreciate your answer because this is the truth. This is the reality, and this is, folks, what we are all about. And this is why I told you just give it a time. When Larry is available, he will be here because you're gonna hear the truth from him and this is exactly why uh, we are we take pride in our uh, channel here for providing accurate uh, uh, information to our viewers so larry i can't thank you enough for really carving out time for us here and we look forward to having you back we will reach out to you again because i like to share your inputs with all our uh, viewers from around the world because they need to hear the different perspective that is not being given an opportunity so once again, uh, thank you so much, Larry. Thank you, David. Uh, you take care. Bye-bye. Ciao.